If the Baltimore Ravens keep this up, I guarantee you they will be unstoppable. But what are we referring to? Well, we're going to get into that shortly. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn them notifications on. Click the thumbs up button. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Now, what could make the Baltimore Ravens unstoppable? We saw just how good of a... Excuse me. We saw just how great of a team they were last year. And they were running through everybody all up until the AFC Championship when they decided, you know what? We don't want to run at all. We ran through the whole NFL, but we want to just stop running completely. So that would be one thing. If they stop beating themselves in the worst, most important moments. If they stop going against everything that worked for them in the past. But we're not even talking about that today. We're talking about Lamar Jackson. If he continues to get even better, then the, nobody's going to be able to beat the Baltimore Ravens, like straight up. And now I know when you hear me say that, you're probably like, oh, please, that ain't nothing. Well, of course, if he gets better, yeah, they can get better. Blah, blah, blah. But no, this happened yesterday, and this was the very first time I have ever seen anything like this. Let me know if y'all saw something like this before. But Jonas Schaefer, he said that Lamar Jackson had one of his most accurate training camp practices ever. That ain't even a kicker. That, that ain't it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm hyped about that. I'm cool about that. But that ain't even what got me. It says, and ended it with a touchdown I cannot detail. It says, uh, Lamar Jackson ended the period with a touchdown pass that, according to training camp reporting guidelines, reporters are forbidden from describing. So Lamar Jackson threw some, I don't know what it was. I don't know what formation it was. I don't know to who it was to. I, I don't know what, nothing about it except that it was a touchdown, but reporters were forbidden, forbidden. They were not allowed to talk about it, to describe it, to go over it, nothing. So I, I don't know what kind of crazy stuff they got going on in Ravens training camp, but I'm all for it if that keeps up. Now, let, let's just listen to how this practice went. What were they working on yesterday? It says, the Ravens spent part of Wednesday's practice going through the motions at half speed. They spent the other part working on boom or bust scenarios at full speed from third and longs to big blitz looks. Lamar Jackson mostly went boom. Unofficially, he missed just one pass in competitive team drills, finishing 12 for 12 and 11 on 11 action and 7 for 8 on 7 in, in 7 and 7 action. He was lethal in the red zone, finishing with four touchdowns, and he was bold pushing that ball downfield. So, 11 on, 11 on 11, low red zone. He went two for two, threw two touchdowns. Then uh, seven on seven, he went three for four. Then on seven on sevens again, he went four for four. Then on 11 on 11s, he went five for five. Then 11 on 11s again, he went three for three. Then on 11 on 11s again, he went two for two. And again, in that last 11 on 11, that's when that touchdown happened that reporters weren't even allowed to talk about. What kind of crazy mess is that? <laughs> Again, but I'm all for it, though. So if Lamar Jackson continues to get even better, continues to get even more accurate, continues to get even more lethal, ooh, NFL, man, you done woke a monster up. Now, we talked about Lamar Jackson, who is definitely one of the best of the best in the game. But we got to flip it to the defensive side of the ball and give a big shout out to somebody else who is also one of the best of the best in the game. In fact, I think he's the best in the world. My opinion, though. Uh, this also came from Jonas Schaefer. It says Lamar Jackson's only interception today. So we ain't talking about yesterday no more. But his only interception today, he said it initially looked like an incomplete pass from the sidelines. But nope. It was just a ridiculous play by Kyle Hamilton. Now, we, we cannot show the video because I don't need no copyright, nothing from the Baltimore Ravens. I love y'all Ravens. Don't do me like that. But anyway, um, you could go look up the video for yourself. Go to BaltimoreRavens.com or find it on Twitter. But anyway, Lamar Jackson put a pass on the money for Mandrews. Lamar Andrews, he dropped it. Ooh, he dropped it. And it looked like it was an incomplete pass, but nope. Super duper Kyle picked the ball off. And we know Mark Andrews, like, look, gotta be real. Mark Andrews is going to drop some. He's going to have some drops for sure. It happens. But he's going to make more plays than he misses. But Kyle Hamilton, super duper Kyle, best safety in the world, man, straight up. And that play right there, that showed exactly why. So this first question on today's episode came from our guy, Gus. Could this be Gus Edwards asking some sneaky questions, trying to find out info? Anyway, he said, we have a respectable wide receiver room, but... 
Do you think that the Ravens would have a shot at Amari Cooper when his restructured deal is done to add more knowledge to the wide receiver room? And what could he potentially bring to the Baltimore Ravens? Well, you know what? Let me um, look up Amari Cooper real quick. Amari Cooper. Let me see how old he is. Oh, he's 30. He's 30. So he's getting close to when the Ravens would normally sign him. He got a couple years left. He got to hit about 34, 35. Then the Ravens will be like, bring me that. But, no, nah, I don't think they got a shot at Amari Cooper. Um, he also said, uh, whatever happened to Shamar Bridges? He balled out in the preseason a few years ago, then just disappeared. Yeah, in the preseason, he did ball out in that first preseason game. Second preseason game, he got hurt. Then he missed some time. They brought him back to the practice squad for a little bit, and then that was it. We never heard from him uh, again, unfortunately. Uh, he also said, last question, and I know we don't want to think about this, but when Justin Tucker decides to hang up the cleats, if he's not already on a team, how would you feel if the Ravens signed Adam Boken from the Montana Grizzlies? Whoa, it's, it's, so, it's so early to think about another kicker. But whether it's Adam Boken from the Montana Grizzlies, whether it's John Brigham from wherever, I just made up a name. I do fully trust, like with Ravens, they ain't got my full trust in a lot of different areas. But when it comes to getting a kicker, I would fully trust whoever they ended up and decided to go with, especially recently, because in recent history, for the most part, they had some loss, uh, yeah, but for the most part, when they pick a kicker, they get the, the, the job right. They get, they get it done the right way. So I would trust them to whoever they went with. He said, congrats on the newborn baby and hope you all are doing extremely well. Gus, I appreciate you. I love you and thank you. Any more bold moves left? Next question came from my guy, Mark GJ. He said, what's going on in great... JG, my apologies. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the fam are doing well and adjusting great with your newest addition. It is definitely an adjustment, but we're trying to Mike McDonald this thing. You know what I'm talking about? Make the adjustments the right way. Yeah, you already know. And hey, Zach Oy, you got, you got it, man. Well, let's continue. He said, I haven't sent a question in a while, and I should have because I seen this Eddie Jackson signing a mile away. Made too much sense. A defensive Alabama vet. If that <laughs> He said, if that don't scream, be more, I don't know what does. Now, this brings me to my question. What is your prediction on what moves the Ravens will make before the season starts? Ooh, before the season starts. Let's see what you had to say. He said, mine's is our, ooh, he said, mine's is our Darius Washington gets traded. He's been propped up a lot, but with having three safeties of high caliber in our loaded cornerback room, I don't see a spot for him. That is such a great point. We like our Darius Washington. We love his versatility. He can play safety, corner. Uh, he can do all that stuff. He can blitz. He can, he can do so many different things. But they, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, uh, Eddie Jackson, Daryl Worley, who they just brought back. And with our Darius Washington, the potential is there, but he's been hurt a lot. He missed a lot of time. Um, I would love if the Ravens kept him just to, for their quality of depth to be that much better. But if they did trade him, that would be very Ravenesque because they signed him as an undrafted rookie free agent. So they anything that they traded him for, they would be getting more uh, than they, I guess, paid for him. I hate that term, but they would be getting more than they invested in him if they were to trade him. Um, I would much rather them keep him, but business-wise, Baltimore Ravens, th that's – that's a sneaky one right there. I ain't think about that. He said, uh, oh, and another thing, too, because you talked about how uh, with having three safeties of high caliber in our loaded cornerback room, I don't see a spot for him. We did our 53-man uh, roster prediction video today on Bleacher Report. And on that video, when we were going through the secondary, it was hard for me to find a spot for our Darius Washington initially. I'm like, mm. like, I had to go back and add him, but I'm like, it's a lot of corners, and we got a lot of safeties. Like, well, I, I added him like as an extra guy almost. So, yeah, you, you, you got a point. So that, that's something to look out for. He said three safeties are locks while you have three cornerbacks locked in as well. While you have TJ Tampa and Arthur Millette to rotate with our three starters. Well, you said three cornerbacks are locks? Unless you're talking about outside corners. I'm assuming with the three corners you're talking about locks. Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, and, um, and Nate Wiggins. Uh, the, oh, yeah. Then you said TJ Tampa. I think he's a lock too. He got to get healthy, obviously, but I think he's a lock too. Awesome letters is a lock for sure. He said the only uh, pushback on this is we could carry six cornerbacks and he'd be awesome depth. Then again, you have a similar cornerback uh, slash safety in Daryl Worley with being versatile. Yeah, 
That's a good point. And, and Darryl Woolley's on special teams a lot, too. He said, I like how Darius Washington. I can, I, I can just see him being the odd man out, especially if a team like the Vikings, the Chargers, the Cowboys, the Colts, the Bills, or the Falcons are in need of a talented hybrid. Also say that we keep five safeties, and the other two are Bo Braid and Sanusi Kane. Whoa. Whoa. He said, Darryl Woolley could be the Swiss Army knife. Uh, this is why I wanted Cooper DeJean, LOL. He said, I'm not complaining. Lastly, I think Trenton should play outside linebacker, but I believe in our edge group. Yeah, I wouldn't have been mad if they got Cooper DeJean because I know a lot of people talked about how he can, he can do so many different things. So having somebody like Kyle Hamilton, then having somebody like Cooper DeJean to where they can both line up in so many different places, like you could really have an offense fooled, but it, it, it's okay. Um, he The safeties, though. Oof. So keep five safeties, and the other two are Bo Braid and Sanusi Kane. Wow. So what was Snoopy King was the seventh round pick? Sixth or seventh round pick. I forget. Uh, and Bo Braid undrafted out of Maryland. Um wow. That is something right there. <clears throat> because no. But if it's five safeties, then that would be Eddie Jackson. You still got Eddie Jackson, Darrell Wally, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams. So that's six safeties, unless you're saying seven safeties in total. No, I think you're saying five, though. But anyway, he said, lastly, I think uh, Trent Simpson should play outside linebacker, but I believe in our edge group. I think they'll move him around, but I think he'll mainly be an inside linebacker. But I, I think he'll be a guy that they move around a little bit. He said, peace, love, and blessings. Engraving the team, keep it clean. Tell someone you love them because uh, you never know what time we have left. Hope you all have a blessed day. Hey, appreciate that, Mark. And I'm going to tell you, I love you, Mark. Guess who's back? It's my guy, TJ. He said it. So I'm on the Ravens website, and I've seen this. CeeDee Lamb will be one diabolical move if the Ravens do this. I know it's not possible, but it ain't impossible either. Let us Ravens fans only dream of this happening, man, with CeeDee Lamb. O-M-G. Oh, I hadn't seen that. Oh, that, that's on NFL.com. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that would be great. That would be lovely. That would be fun. Um, but it ain't going down because it, like, look, Eric DaCosta, um, they haven't quite shifted all the way. They, they've taken some strides and some steps forward as far as the wide receiver room and how they evaluate talent, how they value the wide receivers. They've taken some steps forward for sure, but they aren't quite there yet where they would want to pay all that money to a wide receiver. We got to take baby steps, it feels like, because we, we got to get a first-round draft pick at wide receiver to his real second contract. Technically, I know Rashad Bateman, he got his second contract, but it was like there was a little, little like loophole in there to where they ain't even had to give him the fifth year option and then they could sign him to this extension and those are very small extension a very like but so we waiting on a, a a first round draft pick to get whether it be that fifth year option but then really get that significant big money so zay flowers he could end up being the first we'll see i mean he's headed that way especially from that first year and i know it's just the first year but i feel like he gave us every single reason to expect him to continue that and more so yeah ravens gotta take some baby steps to get there but they ain't looking to pay no like 30 33 34 mil to know what per year to wide receiver like <laughs> Ooh, by the time ravens start doing that um we're in 2024 now it might be 2034 by the time they start doing that 